Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about a very important aspect when we write Spark programs, which is what are the challenges that we face uh, while debugging a Spark program. So it's it's very important to write a performance efficient program or a Spark SQL query, but it is equally important to know how to debug it. So even before we get into how to debug, we should understand what are the challenges that we can face. That makes us well prepared to understand how to deal with the issues. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about why is Spark debugging a nightmare or why do people find it really difficult to debug a Spark program? The first thing is lazy evaluation. As we have spoken before, what is lazy evaluation? When Spark looks at a program, uh, it does not do anything until it gets to an action. So the, if there are transformations that we have written in the program like map, filter, nothing happens when Spark encounters those commands. Only when we try to perform some action like collecting the data, saving, etc., that is when actually the job gets created. So it's a lazy evaluation. Now it is very hard to debug because when since it is a lazy evaluation, it's not like in our normal programming languages where you can do a compile time check of what is happening. You can do a syntax check, but you can't actually figure out the issues. They will come only when the transformation uh, is written. Uh, and an action is called. So even if you get to a transformation, nothing happens. So it's a lazy evaluation. Hence, the error comes at a later point of time. The other thing and a very important thing to understand is that Spark operates on distributed architecture. What, what does that mean? That since we are dealing with huge amount of data, we are operating in a distributed architecture where you have number of nodes across which data is spread and a Spark program is running. So it's not one single machine that you just go and do a local debug. It's a distributed setup, so it is hard to see the logs and errors immediately and then figure out where or which task exactly is failing. Within a task also, there may be one particular data partition that is failing. So since it's not a single machine setup, it's a distributed architecture, it is difficult to get to the right node, the right task and the right data partition where actually the error is happening. Then opaque stack traces. What does that mean? That means that the error that we see, so there are multiple ways of seeing error in Spark logs, that there is the Spark UI, but Spark internally gives you the stack traces, which are basically nothing but the Java stack traces, or uh, it's the way Spark shows you the error. So it's difficult to read that and pinpoint exactly in where in the code the issue happened. So we have written code maybe in Scala, Python, Java, any of the languages. But internally, Spark is giving us stack traces because Spark is written in Java internally. So that's where it becomes uh, difficult to get to the actual problem. We don't have access to intermediate data since let's say we run a Spark SQL query or we run a Spark job. We have written a particular logic which finally dumps data into a location or a table. But while doing that execution, Spark internally creates a number of intermediate or temporary tables to get to the execution. We don't explicitly get to see that unless we do a persist or we log properly extensively or we try to save that data somewhere. So those intermediate uh, stages or data would not be seen by us unless and until we specifically do that. That's why also it is diffi difficult to get to that those tables. Then uh, what is DAG? DAG is nothing but a directed acyclic graph. So when Spark executes a program, internally it creates a DAG and then executes. So the entire job or stages or task that we see, those are represented the job in the stages as a DAG. So somebody needs to really understand how to read a DAG. If the pipeline is really huge, then this problem becomes 
uh, even more complex. Although the Spark UI shows us the DAG, but we need to understand how to read that DAG. That's not very straightforward. It needs a bit of practice and understanding of DAG. Then it gives you a very clear picture of what is happening at the job level, at the stage level, and where exactly should you go and fix the issue. Is it a data skew issue? Is it some shuffle issue? What exactly is happening? You should be able to read that from the Spark UI. There can be serialization issues. So you would have seen when you write Spark programs, you would have encountered issue called not serializable exception. Right? These issues will show up into the pipeline at the runtime. And there is very little help. There are no compile time checks that help you. So when you see this not serializable exception, most commonly occurring one, then you have to dig deeper into the pipe pipeline when it has executed, like going through the logs, through the Spark UI to understand where this exception is coming. Data skew. Now, data skew is also one of the very common problems. And when does it happen? It is nothing but skewness in data or uneven data distribution. So one of the rules in performance optimization is to create data partition so that your queries run faster. But while creating that partition, if we do not pay attention to which should be the column on which the data should be partitioned, we can get skews, which means one partition may have a lot of data, other partition may have very small data. So this definitely affects the performance of the query. And it is not easy to understand because the error that we will get is kind of out of memory for specific nodes because the data in one partition may be huge and going out of memory. So get to know to, to that point where we know that this out of memory is because of the issue of data skewness becomes difficult. Now, Let's talk about one of uh, some few common pain points that most of the programmers face. So uh, when we talk about big data distributed architecture, one of the toughest thing to achieve is performance. And the slow performance can be attributed to many things. But we have spoken about it in detail in many videos that uh, if there is a lot of data shuffle across the cluster, that means data movement is going on, then it will slow down the performance. So the things like shuffles and white transformation. White transformation means where you are shuffling data across the network. Then skewness in data, small file, files, inefficient I.O., improper partitioning. All of these can cause low, slow performance. So let's look at each of these to understand what this means. First of all, shuffle and white partitions, transformations. What is white transformation? Whenever data, simply put, in a distributed setup, when data is moving across the cluster due to the operations that you have written in your code, that is known in a, as a white transformation. Narrow is when there is very little or no shuffling of data across the cluster. That's the ideal situation. So operations like group by key, join or distinct will cause huge amount of shuffle and large volumes of data will move across the cluster. These are extremely ex uh, expensive and it will uh, cause performance bottlenecks. So instead of doing a group by key, if we, if we do a reduce by key, that will uh, make sure that we are not doing too many white transformations. So this is one of the major, major reasons for a slow performance. Second is, we spoke about it, skewed data. If we do not partition properly, one partition may become really huge, causing out of memory exception. The other partitions may be really small. So this will take a lot of time when the tasks, tasks are getting executed. And these kind of tasks commonly are known as stragglers. What does a straggler mean? Any task which is slowing down the whole job is a straggler. So we need to be very careful in terms of choosing partitions and buckets. They are a very important tool to performance optimize, but at the same time, they can cause bottlenecks in performance if not rightly chosen. Then comes the small files or inefficient I.O. situation. So when we have larger files that Spark can handle, it is better. 
if we have too many small files it becomes a overhead for spark to read them write them back and do the operations it will also cause inefficient use of our executors because every task is running on an executor which is nothing but a node now if the files are too small it will not be efficient so again we need to make sure how we are partitioning bucketing the data what kind of operations are we doing on our data to make sure that we are not causing too many small files we spoke about partitioning how important it is if we have less very less partitions it is under utilizing the cluster if we have too many partitions it is an overhead for the task so there is a manual tuning or titration required we can do repartitions also it is why i say it is a partition uh, titration to do correct selection of a partition column because we need to do some permutation combination to see what is the right thing to do for our data and this purely depends on what kind of operations or queries are we going to run on data if i know i'm going to query or put a where clause mostly on the employee city then my partition column can be city it can be one column multiple column depending on the kind of data uh, or the way i'm going to query the data so another important thing is this whole partitioning strategy and there is no set rule for this it's a titration to decide what works best for our use case the thing that can cause issue is unpersisted data so <clears throat> if uh, we are not using caches or we are not persisting data then there is a probability that spark will again have to recompute the entire lineage and get that uh, data set which will lead to redundant work and definitely performance bottleneck so what we should do is when we know that this data set is going to be reused again and again we should either cache it or we should persist it to avoid any kind of performance issues in summarization what all can we do we can persist or cache data uh, we can do a show or a sample to just look at a set uh, sample of the data and do some validations it is always advisable to write smaller pipelines because or break the bigger pipelines into smaller pieces because if it is one big complex pipeline it is difficult to debug so for our own uh, maintenance um, reducing the maintenance overhead or for making our life easy by debugging a big pipeline should always be broken into smaller ones so that we can manage them Another way is to look at the Spark UI, understand very clearly how to read a DAG and uh, how the tasks are looking like, how the job was divided into stages, all of that information helps in debugging. Doing detailed logging and writing unit test cases. So all of this put together can help us to reduce many of the performance bottlenecks and make our debugging easy. One more category that we often see which causes issue is data integrity issues when we write spark programs often there are <clears throat> because we are dealing with huge amount of data we see lot of data integrity issues what are those one of the most common is schema mismatch why because we are talking about a big data world where we are getting data from disparate sources of different uh, data is of different types it can be json parquet hive and many other uh, ways in which we get data and it can have inconsistent or evolving schema so there can be uh, of course with time schema may evolve it can cause schema mismatches there can be inconsistencies in types in terms of data types etc which can cause schema mismatches so and ultimately what will happen is if we have mismatched data types or we have missing data it will lead to silent data loss or nulls we can see lot of nulls in the data which will cause data quality issues later so that brings us to a important point that it is very very important to handle null values if we do a filter for example if we do a filter on a column and then we say that you know count filter on the column values which are greater than 100 it will uh, ignore the nulls very silently so nulls will propagate unexpectedly and they will lead to subtle data quality issues it is important to identify why is the null coming and then treat them accordingly bad joins and duplicates <clears throat> now joins is also a big problem if we do not do proper joins and do not select the keys correctly for join 
it can lead to huge performance bottlenecks if we uh, look at wrong joint keys it can lead to cartesian products cartesian products will cause the data to humongously inflate already the data is big and a cartesian product will result in a humongous data it can if you are doing inner joints with missing keys it can drop records it can introduce duplicates so there is a heavy price to pay if the joints and the joint keys are not selected properly then partition override a lot of times there are use cases where we say that we want to overwrite a partition and this is risky if we have not paid attention to our partition logic because it may entirely drop the data and cause data losses so <clears throat> these are the few things that will result in data integrity issues and a huge uh, performance bottleneck it will be difficult to debug also so it's very important to look at partition properly joins join keys null values all of this have to be given a critical look what to do so we need to profile our data going to the spark ui or there are multiple uh, tools in the market like ganglia data dog we can use those we should use definitely data quality checks to ensure that there are no nulls we can have logging where we are printing the schema at every major stage to know if there are any schema related issues memory settings executor settings need to be uh, done tweaked based on the data that we are operating on data skews need to be monitored we have to see where to use broadcast join and then of course testing is a big part of this whole development cycle now we spoke about multiple areas where in spark we see issues whether it is data related integrity related or some of the common uh, mistakes we make while building the program all of this leads to a bigger issue which is frustration of chasing bugs in spark what does that mean this whole uh, bad coding bad configurations result in issues and they uh, tend to go into endless debugging loop why because you will get to know the bug only in production since we are operating on distributed architecture and huge amount of data local deb debugging is very limited most of the issues will appear in production and then we have to keep rerunning do the trial and error on the configurations fix the issue and then we uh, again rerun the job so it is a trial and error fix there is no silver bullet to say these are the 10 steps to follow we know the probable errors and that's what we are doing in this video to understand the types of errors and how to debug but there is no silver bullet it's a trial and error and that gets frustrating it also drains out resources because it these jobs are compute heavy or data heavy due to the nature of the data and the architecture so we are every time we are rerunning the job with the fixes it is taking minutes to hours then it fails it is consuming resources and the developers are literally babysitting those jobs to debug the issues so it leads to frustration it leads to draining of resources and time then another problem is we are seeing symptoms of issues most commonly occurring errors are task not serializable null pointer exception out of memory exception there are stack traces that are given but there is no clarity like what i said no silver bullet or set of actions to be done so it gives you symptoms that you like a doctor have to understand and then go and do the changes and again look back at it so it's a iterative or Uh, it's a exponential cycle if i may put it that way it's iterative definitely but it is exponential reason being any small change that you make will change the dag which is the core of the job so again you may see newer problems so it's a cycle you keep fixing and looking at the dag and then coming back so it is advisable to have good observability which means any intermediate data that the spark job is creating needs to be persisted or cached and checked as to what is happening at each stage it is better to invest in monitoring logging and observability so that later on it is easier to debug in summary what should we do we should break down the pipeline into modular testable stages we should do thorough testing thorough logging use inbuilt features that data breaks or delta lake provides invest in monitoring and observability so these are some of the very basic things that every programmer should do 
now this was in a nutshell all about what kind of errors do we get commonly the nature of that how complex it is why we should uh, you know think about these things proactively i hope this video has helped you please like share and subscribe for many such videos on spark and big data technologies thank you very much